Welcome to Techie Chat. In today's episode, I'll be talking about why buy a recycled laptop and also sharing some tips on what to look out for when buying a recycled laptop. To find out more, join me after the intro. Welcome back. So recently I purchased a W520 ThinkPad laptop from eBay for an absolute steal of a price. Fantastic laptop, full HD screen, 16 gig of RAM, 120 gig SSD, and a load of other goodies as well. It can be expanded up to 32 gig of RAM. But this laptop was built in 2011. And it is also considered a classic laptop. And of course, having a classic ThinkPad, I decided to post an image of it, which you can see now uh, on the ThinkPad Reddit stream. And it was really interesting to see the variety of responses there I got. Some of the posters on there and some of the responses I got were basically why why did you buy a refurb ThinkPad when you could have got a brand new laptop? And it got me thinking about that question. Why buy a refurbished laptop? What's so good about buying a refurbished laptop as opposed to buying a brand new laptop? Well, one of the first answers to that would be being unable to financially afford a brand new laptop. They're pretty expensive things and sometimes it's just not possible to stretch the budget to buy a brand new laptop. Now, I can't deny that when you do buy a brand new laptop, it's a fantastic experience. You know, it's from the manufacturers. You get that brand new feeling kind of similar to buying a brand new car. It has that new car or new laptop smell about it. And that is really nice. However, it's not the be all and end all. And after a few weeks of using that laptop, that freshness and that new laptop smell soon wears off and it just becomes the laptop that you use every day. One of the other reasons for buying a refurbished or second hand laptop is actually about carbon footprint. Did you know that recycling one million laptops a year can save enough energy to power 3,500 US homes for an entire year? An entire year. That's just that's just insane. In fact, Dell did some research back in 2009 and they found that the carbon footprint of a laptop is comparable to driving 745 miles or 1200 kilometers in a Porsche Cayenne that's measured over a four year lifespan of a laptop. So actually building and assembling a laptop, there's quite a sizable carbon footprint involved in that. When you buy a recycled or second hand laptop, you're helping to reduce demand for raw materials. For example, there is a lot of valuable materials that go into building a laptop. Things like gold and silver and plastics are used in the assembly of laptops, as well as the things like the LCD use a lot of valuable resources. So, in terms of a carbon footprint and in terms of a greener point of view, recycling laptops is the better option. But what happens when you have already got a laptop and it's starting to run slow? Well, if you're a regular viewer of the channel, you'll know that I advocate using operating systems like Linux or FreeBSD to revive your laptop. Both Microsoft and Apple have planned obsolescence built directly into their operating systems. They want you to buy new hardware 
Apple most certainly want you to buy new Macs. And a good example of this is this, a MacBook Pro 13 inch from 2012. It can no longer be upgraded with Mac OS. Now, Apple would argue that the features that they have built into the new Mac OS can only really utilize the newer hardware. However, that is an example of planned obsolescence. Apple, after all, want you to buy a brand new MacBook M1 or M2 or whatever the next M series is. They want you to upgrade and spend money on a new laptop. And that's expensive. You're talking about £900 upwards for a brand new MacBook. And Windows is similar. Windows has agreements with PC manufacturers and PC manufacturers want you to buy their hardware too. So within Windows and Windows 10 and 11 and all the previous versions of Windows, there is an expiry date for support. Now, you could argue that that is due to the features supported on new hardware, that these systems have to continue to evolve to support the new hardware. And at some point, that old hardware can no longer be supported. And that's the duality, really, of planned obsolescence is, yes, that is a factor that plays into it. However, this MacBook Pro, for example, cost £1,100 when brand new. And this was a laptop hope, I was hoping to use for years. And I have indeed used it for years, but it's now reached the end of its Apple life. The operating system I can install on it now is really got a ton of security holes in it and can no longer be securely used. So where does that leave us? Well, of course, this channel advocates using free operating systems like Linux, like FreeBSD and other BSD editions, as well as a heap of alternative operating systems that are out there and are free to install. For example, I could install Linux on this Mac. I could install FreeBSD or another BSD on this MacBook Pro and breathe new life into the hardware. When I received this W520 ThinkPad laptop, it had a clean version of Windows 10 pre-installed on there, which was great. I tried running it for all of 10 minutes. I had Edge open, I had a few tabs open, and it was kind of coping, but a little bit sluggish. I could understand why the seller would have wanted to get rid of this laptop. It could have been down to Microsoft updates, probably running in the background. One of the things about uh, Windows 10 is when it downloads updates in the background, all of a sudden your machine runs like a tortoise. <laughs> but anyhow, I decided to get rid of Windows and just wipe the hard drive clean. And I've installed GhostBSD on there with the latest security patches, all the latest updates, the latest version of Firefox on there, I can now open multiple tabs with no noticeable slowdown. So here we are. This is my GhostBSD laptop running on the W520. Let's just take a look at the system monitor. And as you can see, despite the fact that I am recording in full HD, that I also have my video running, I'm recording in USB audio as well, the CPUs are managing very, very well. Not really touched at all, in fact, which is pretty amazing for a laptop from 2011. The memory usage is 1.5 gig of my 16 gig available. So really, this is doing very, very well. Yet this laptop was £100 from eBay. I even have a Firefox tab open down below. 
and still this laptop is handling things snappily and fast. It does everything I need it to do in a very effective way. So what do I look for when I am looking for a refurbished laptop? Well, I do tend to look at the three big manufacturers and they are Dell, Lenovo and HP. Why do I look at those manufacturers? Well, large corporates and businesses do tend to buy these laptops in bulk. They have agreements in place with people like Dell, HP and Lenovo, which means they can buy in bulk at a reduced price for each laptop. That means they get a business grade laptop, a professional quality made laptop that is expected to last. Most large corporations or businesses would tend to renew their hardware every four years. And that's also part of the agreement they have with these large computer manufacturers. So they get a further reduced price if they agree to purchase new hardware every four years and they agree to be tied to that manufacturer. It means a guaranteed income for that manufacturer and it means that the company then gets new hardware to offer its employees, which can be an attractive incentive for people to join that company. So what happens to that old hardware that they were using? Well, you'll often find IT departments with stacks of laptops racked up behind them. And some of those get recycled. Some of those then get pushed out to employees so, uh, who then take them home. Sometimes there's a buyback scheme where the employee can purchase back that laptop for themselves. And all sorts of things happen. Some get recycled in we recycling. But a lot of those laptops find their way onto eBay. So that's why I tend to look out for one of those three big manufacturers, because you do tend to get a lot of options out there in the online auction places for very decent business grade laptops that can be very useful in the home environment. My second tip for buying a refurbished laptop is to think about what is it you're going to use it for? And that can require some thinking. It might be useful to write down the things you need it to do. So for example, are you gonna travel with it? If so, it might be good to look at some of the thinner, smaller laptop ranges. Do you need it to game on? Then if that's the case, then possibly a business grade laptop might not be the one for you. And you might need to look at some higher grade laptop options out there or even possibly think about having a desktop PC that's specifically for gaming. Think carefully about the specifications of the refurb PC that you want to buy. Does it have upgradable options so that it will last you into the foreseeable future? For example, this Dell XPS laptop, whilst really small and really thin, very pleasant to hold and use, is stuck with four gig of soldered on RAM and a 1366 by 768 display, which means it's not very pleasant to look at day in and day out, and it can't handle many tabs being open on it all at once. It's not very fast. And at some point, it's gonna be quite difficult to use this laptop because there's no upgrade options available for it. So be careful when choosing particular laptops that they do have upgrade options available. My third tip is research. Of course, Google is your friend here. However, you can also join forums like Reddit and join something like the HP or the Lenovo or the Dell forums to find out and even ask the question in the forum, tell them what your budget is and you are going to get a stream of responses back uh, advising on what is best to buy for your budget. And that can be really, really helpful at times. 
when you get that advice uh, because some people are more biased to one or the other make sure you do do your research online as well and find out the specifications of that particular PC before making a purchase is it reliable is it something that people consider to be well built and upgradable these things are important when purchasing refurbished my final tip is does your existing PC laptop or desktop actually need to be replaced for example many PCs have come with the SATA disks installed and they have these type of connectors and you can actually replace these drives with SSD drives which are now relatively cheap and they have exactly the same connectors in them as these SATA disks do so a SATA SSD drive could be a really good replacement drive and certainly improve the performance of any PC whether it be laptop or desktop by a considerable amount and make your machine feel like a brand new machine also consider does your PC support memory upgrades some laptops actually can support a processor upgrade so it's worth looking into your upgrade options before you make that decision to buy a new or refurbished or second-hand PC replacement so I hope this episode has been helpful to you if you are considering buying a refurbished laptop remember if your laptop is running slow then try putting Linux or FreeBSD on it get your stuff backed up onto an external hard drive then wipe that drive and stick Linux or FreeBSD on there and watch your PC come back to life anyway I hope you found it helpful if you have then please click on like and subscribe and I look forward to seeing you next time thanks for watching